Well, hello there. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good to see you. Of course, I am back from our vacation back home to Denver, which means I finally get to get back in front of camera for you guys and discuss some of what's been going on. Very, very crazy news was happening right as I was leaving. If you remember when I made my last video, now in the middle of the week last week, um, that same day was the day that Sony was going to be having their press conference and reveal whatever the PlayStation Neo was going to be. Of course, I did not have time to make a video discussing what was going on, which was really unfortunate. So at this point, I'm here to do that today. Of course, I'm now a week late to the party, so I feel like maybe not as many people um, are going to be viewing this as would have if I had made it last week which is too bad, but that's okay. Hopefully you tune in and you appreciate what I have to say and how I'm adding to this conversation about the PlayStation Pro, because as we know, that is what the PlayStation 4 Neo turned into. It's the PlayStation 4 Pro. And they kind of had a whole blowout of information. They did some live streaming of some gameplay uh, footage from what the PlayStation 4 Pro is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be so much better than, and all these different things. So let's just get into what happened. As I said, the PlayStation 4 Neo, which was rumored and then confirmed for a long time by Sony to be some new iteration of the PlayStation 4, was finally showed. Um, we kind of know it's their attempts to combat what Microsoft seems to maybe be doing with the Scorpio. And that, on paper, seems like a great idea. It's the execution that we're going to talk about today. So what they really showed was, you know, they confirmed that the PlayStation 4 Slim, of course, does exist, which, duh, Sony was terrible about keeping that secret, and they were completely boneheaded by copyright striking and pulling down videos and articles about this, which was really ridiculous. Even a good friend of mine, um, OJ, who runs Player Essence, I know he was very vocal about how he made a video showing just photos that were available publicly online of people who had a PS4 Slim, and his channel got striked, and it, it you know it's affected his ability to stream on YouTube for a couple of weeks, and he is not the only one. Many people went through that. Sony, you idiots. What did you think that was actually going to accomplish other than confirming the fact that the thing existed? I don't know what sort of advantage or leverage that gave them when announcing it at their event, but... Whatever, man, that's how they chose to go about things. I guess that's just fine. So they confirmed that the PlayStation 4 Slim does, does exist. It's going to launch sometime this month in November. It's actually very soon. And I think it's a $299 basic price point for the smallest available hard drive, which is a fine price. And a slimmer, better running PS4 is completely fine. Uh, I will have to say, as a PS4 owner... Uh, someone who really enjoys my PS4. I will say that the thing runs like crap. My Wii U and Xbox One are silky smooth, very quiet. They feel completely, you know, capable of doing everything that they're supposed to do. And I've talked about this before. My PlayStation 4 really feels and sounds like it's struggling. Putting discs in and out of that thing is so cumbersome. And it's just so loud and clunky. And I just feel like the thing's going to break at any moment. I've never had an issue. So I don't want to make it sound like I have. But it just doesn't feel like the thing is comfortable running discs. And I think that's too bad. So improving something like that with a PlayStation 4 Slim is great. That's probably the only reason I would get excited to have a new model of a PlayStation 4 right now is to just avoid that. But since I've never actually had a problem with it other than the fact that it sounds like it's going to die, I have no reason to do so. Also, I have that limited edition uh, Darth Vader PlayStation 4 that I got with my uh, Battlefront when that released last year, so I really don't want to trade in my PlayStation 4. It's awesome. So they revealed the Slim. They confirmed it's a thing. Okay, that's coming soon. Let's talk about what Sony was really trying to push, and that is the PlayStation 4 Pro. So this is their beefier, new, next-gen, upgraded version of the current PlayStation 4 as it exists. It's releasing in November, November 10th or 15th, I want to say. I don't have any dates in front of me. I'm sorry, guys. But it is November this year, um, which is crazy. It's not releasing next year alongside of the Scorpio. It is this year. And it's, um, I don't know, it's 4K, but apparently it's not true native 4K. I don't understand the differences of these things, unfortunately. But I do know that while it can do, pull off like the effect of 4K and take advantage of what 4K TVs can output it's not a true true 4k and i think that we'll have to see if what the scorpio does next year if it's going to be doing actual true 4k and i would be willing to bet that it probably will however it's still very great that you know the new playstation is powerful enough with its ps4 pro mode that many games will be able to take advantage of if you have a 4k tv you'll be able to do some sort of 4k output resolution and it's going to look apparently really really fantastic 
and that's cool. So it's it's going to do that. Um, it's taking advantage of this HDR, which is some other form of like uh, improved visuals. And I don't really know that stuff either. I know I'm like maybe not the best guy to talk about the actual specs of these kinds of things, but I'm going to get into the business side of it in a minute. And that's what I really want to focus on. But it's doing this HDR thing, which apparently makes even regular 1080p visuals look better. Um, so I think it has that capability. And I mean, that's kind of it. I know something that a lot of people have been talking about is that of course, the PS4 is a Blu-ray player, um, but it's not a 4K Blu-ray player. So while it's going to be able to play your video games in 4K, it won't play 4K movies and 4K Blu-rays, which are now becoming a pretty big thing. And I guess for me, I could care less about that. But I do understand that it doesn't look good when you're trying to sell the benefits of your new upgraded hardware. And when you consider that the Xbox One S, which came out now a month or two ago, which is the first of... Microsoft's two new versions of their Xbox that plays 4K Blu-ray and the fact that the that the Pro which you would think would be meant to combat the Scorpio next year doesn't have that ability although it doesn't affect gaming and to me that's all I care about in a machine I do think it's kind of surprising and it does seem like a missed opportunity with Sony mostly because even though I could give two shits about it it's, it's important for a lot of gamers, for tech guys, for people who want to buy the machine with the coolest, newest thing. And now Sony can't market it that way. The Xbox One S literally has a leg up on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And that's a very interesting design choice and design decision by Sony. And I think it's because Sony isn't probably able to take a loss on the PS4 Pro. And I'm willing to bet that Microsoft is able to take a loss on the S. And I think that that's what's happening there. Is Microsoft is able to say, well, you know, it's, it would cost a lot to make this thing play 4K Blu-rays, but we really want to have that ability. Let's just put it in the one S, but we're just going to sell it for a little bit of a loss. And Sony's like, well, we can't really afford to sell this at a loss. So we need to make sure that however we release, we manufacture and release the PlayStation 4 Pro, we've got to be making some sort of profit. Marginal as it may be, we got to make a profit. So... If we have to drop something, let's drop the 4K Blu-ray. And I have to say, if in fact that's how it played out, the reason I'm ultimately okay with it is because they they left in all the features that improve the gaming experience. And people, we get, we're get we so caught up nowadays in forgetting about the gaming experience. It's like people are buying Xboxes and Playstations more for its video streaming and its Blu-ray capability and all the other crap it does and not really paying attention to what it does for gaming. And I think that that's too bad. So... I would like for the thing to have had a 4K Blu-ray. I think that it would have helped Sony with selling this thing. They made this decision, whether it's a money thing or not, that's what's happened. So Sony now has to deal with it. And it is going to affect the marketing and it's going to affect the appeal for a lot of people. So what's crazy about everything that the Pro seems to be doing, you guys, a lot of you probably know the tech stuff better than I do. You've already seen the details. You understand the differences between all these machines. The Xbox One, PS4, the One S, the Scorpio, or the, uh, the the Pro, sorry, and then whatever the Scorpio might turn out to be. Which, again, people also, we have to remember, we don't really know the fine details of the Scorpio. So, we can assume a lot about it, but when people start talking about how the Scorpio is obviously better than the Pro, well, we don't know a damn thing about the Scorpio. But, we're going to go on assumptions here that are probably pretty good based on what Microsoft has said and the fact that it's coming out a year later. So when you look at all of these, we now have a full understanding of what the Pro is, is capable of. They've released a spec sheet. They've given the public all the details with the Pro. What's interesting to me about the Pro, revealed at the same time that they also revealed the Slim, is you would have to think the Pro is supposed to be Sony's answers to Xbox's Scorpio. But this thing, to me, seems like it's only barely able to be competing against and combating with the One S. So I feel like Sony has chosen a really weird business model or they were just caught completely off guard with what Microsoft was doing. And Microsoft is working really hard, busting their ass, spending a lot of money to basically win back this generation from Sony. Because Sony revealing this, this PlayStation 4 Pro that barely seems to be able to keep up with what Microsoft's lower version of their upgraded hardware is, the Xbox One S... All of a sudden, whatever the Xbox Scorpio is going to turn into next year, which like I said, here's where we're going on assumptions. If it really is this crazy powerful thing and they're, they're making what almost is going to feel more like a next-gen Xbox as opposed to an up upgraded Xbox One, the PS4 Pro, I would have to think, stands no chance against the Scorpio. I mean, the PS4 Pro is going to be outdated as hell by the time that the Scorpio launches next year. And if Microsoft... 
hopefully sticks true to their word that it will play all the Xbox One games and there's going to be no difference between, you know, every single game in the Xbox One will run on the Scorpio and vice versa. It's just a Scorpio takes advantage of new stuff just like the, the PS4 Pro does. That's that's going to be huge. That is going to make the PS4 Pro so obsolete and Sony's going to have to start killing it with their first party stuff really soon. They've already released Uncharted 4. And I don't know what they're going to be doing next year that's going to be exclusive, that's going to make a difference. I mean, we don't we know they don't make Jack and Daxter. Well, they did make a Ratchet and Clank game, so they I guess they did that. But they don't make Jack and Daxter games anymore. Um, they don't make much of anything. Last Guardian's coming out this year. I just don't know what they're going to do to make the PlayStation brand so appealing over the hype that the Scorpio is going to build. I mean, when the Scorpio was first announced, I was like, well, that's interesting, but it's just so weird. And it's just confusing the hell out of this generation, so is it really a good thing for people? But at this point, I feel like by the time we get one year down the road from today, the Scorpio is going to see seem really appealing to a lot of people. We know Microsoft is going to turn that marketing machine up to 11, and they are going to kill it. So what I think is the Scorpio is going to be very successful, regardless of whether I think it will look good or not, regardless of whether I like the idea that all these new weird freaking hardware machines are coming out. I mean, it's going to be appealing, and I think that Microsoft is going to make it a success. <clears throat> and when you when you look at people's very positive reception to the Xbox One S and people's pretty lackluster reception to the PlayStation 4 Pro, I feel like Microsoft is going to gain a lot of ground by the time the Scorpio launches next year. I don't think Microsoft is going to surpass Sony. I mean, Sony has like a 20 million unit lead. And even if the Xbox sales continue to climb between now and then, PlayStation 4, they're also still going to sell. Pros are going to sell. Slims are going to sell. So it's not like Sony just, like, you know, dug their own grave and now all of a sudden they're dead in the water. They're going to continue to sell because it's a good machine and their marketing is still very good. So PlayStation 4 ain't going away. By the time the Scorpio comes out next year, no matter how great Microsoft does, they're not going to have caught up. But I think that if the Scorpio truly is as great as it seems, and if people really buy into it, and people all of a sudden feel like, hey, the Xbox is where I want to go now, forget this PlayStation thing, I mean, they really could surpass Sony by the end of this generation, due in part to the Scorpio. And if that happens, that'll show that Microsoft maybe made a really smart move. Maybe it all, you know, flips on its head, and maybe the Pro turns out to really be successful. What I found interesting is during the little bits of the stream that I was able to watch, it's funny because this is something Terminator Juice actually brought up on a podcast, I think before E3, when we thought maybe the Neo might show up at E3, is it's like, okay, if all these machines, if their main focus for improving gaming is just like 4K, how do you show that and how do you sell that in a presentation? And when he said that, I was like, bro. That is a really good point. How do you sell that? And this, the, and the awkwardness of this was proved during PlayStation's pre presentation and conference, which, albeit, was actually very cool. Don't get me wrong. But uh, they're showing this new footage of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which looks so awesome, by the way. I am so excited for that game. So, gameplay-wise, Sony killed it with this presentation. But let's look at how they were trying to use Horizon, or the Mass Effect Andromeda stuff they showed off, which also looked so wonderful, by the way. So excited for some of these games. Um, you know, they're showing these games off in 4K, running on the PS4 Pro. And they even have this little disclaimer that says, you know, this is best taken advantage of on your 4K TV. Well, no one has 4K TVs. I mean, the penetration for 4K right now, I don't know the number, but I bet it's 15% or lower. I could be wrong. And if someone is like, ah, it's 25%, you dumbass. Well, okay, I'm a dumbass. But it's still not a lot. There's no way it could possibly be more than 25%. Not that many people have 4K TVs yet. Give it another couple years. Sony and Microsoft are going to increase people's willingness to buy 4K TVs. Absolutely. Maybe several years down the road, I'll buy in too. We'll see. It depends on what Nintendo does with the NX too. Um... But, I mean, they're trying to show this gameplay off in 4K, and it's like, how? what are you... I mean, I'm just watching what looks like regular gameplay on my TV. Like, I have my 50-inch TV, 1080p, streaming this event, watching this awesome-looking Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay, and they're talking about, this is what the PS4, PS4 Pro is capable of, and I'm like... I'm just looking at regular footage. To me, it makes no difference. They want me to use a 4K TV. That'd be nice. I don't have one. Most people don't have one. So all of a sudden, you're running into this thing where they're creating a business model. Microsoft as well. Everyone's looking at creating this business model around 4K visuals, which is really just what is being output. It's not the actual creation and design of the game from the inside out. And 
it's like you can't show this off. You can't show people, look at how great it, look at how great your four, the 4K visuals look. It's like, well, you don't have a 4K TV or a way to stream it that way. So they're just sort of telling us and promising us via a bubble of text that shows up in the corner of gameplay that this is the future of visuals. This is what you should be spending $400 on this November and $500 next year on Microsoft's machine. Like, you can't translate the benefit of 4K visuals to anyone that doesn't have the ability to view 4K visuals. Visuals. And it's totally different than if in 1996 you're watching footage of Zelda A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo and then you watch all of a sudden footage of Zelda Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. It doesn't matter what kind of freaking TV you're watching that on, you can see the difference in visuals and you can see the benefit to the new power the Nintendo 64 was making available to you and how it was going to make game gaming and gameplay more awesome. You can't do that nowadays, the way people are trying to sell their machines, and it's stupid, and it just shows it just shows more of how unfocused and awkward this eighth generation is where no one knows what they're what they're trying to do. I mean, and 4K visuals, as great as they may be, it doesn't improve gaming the way visual improvements or controller enhancements have done in the past and would still do today. And this isn't like totally changing the hardware to make stuff available on this new hardware so great that isn't available on the previous hardware that's the problem with upgrades is it's like you're not doing anything that technically isn't possible on the current hardware so what are you even selling people you're just trying to sell people 4k tvs that's all this shit is i think the heart of it all is buy 4k tvs the industry push is to go to 4k which is fine you got to advance at some point but this is such an awkward way to do it and it's like making kind of like making the video game industry like the media industry's bitch and it's saying hey we're just gonna like use you we're gonna crack the whip at the video game industry and say hey make 4k happen make people want to buy 4k tvs bah, 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 bah. and everyone's like uh, uh okay um new hardware uh 4k it looks great in 4k so buy 4k everything and along with 4k blu-rays too i mean everyone's guilty you know the film and in film industry hollywood the video game industry now everyone's making this push and it's like, there are advantage, advantages to doing this, sure. But right now, the gaming industry is doing it in a very awkward way that feels a little bit forced, it feels unfocused, and it feels like they're kind of scrambling to find a way to make this all happen. Hence, we get these weird Xbox One S's, PS4 Slims, PS4 Neos, PS4 uh, Xbox Scorpios. We're just getting all this weird shit. And, you know, maybe the NX ends up to be 4K2 and they're trying to push that. And, I mean, you know, Nintendo is in such a different boat because they're committing to an actual next generation of their hardware, and that's extremely exciting, and we know that Nintendo tends to innovate in other ways beyond just, ooh, pretty flashy visuals. They haven't done that since pretty much the 64 and the GameCube, so however Nintendo's thing plays out, that's going to be interesting, and I can't talk any more about that until they finally show it to us. Hopefully that's in another couple weeks, and when that happens, obviously I'll be talking to you about it. But the PS4 Pro and everything happening here... It's just weird. It's not terrible. I know I kind of got a little bit ranty near the end here, but it's really not terrible. It's like, like I said, the, the eighth generation had to acknowledge very early on that it didn't know what the hell it was doing. These game companies weren't prepared, as I've said many times before. No one was focused, Nintendo included, on how to make the eighth generation work properly, last for a long time, satisfy gamers, and also satisfy developers. And I think all of this is pushes from developers, pushes from the media industry to go to 4K, confusion over what gamers really want, gamers confusion confusing way to translate the messages of what we do want and all sorts of stuff myriad problems that have been happening with the eighth generation there has been some great games so i'm still enjoying what's happening in gaming today but man this is just a really weird time and i think we just have to just ride this out see how it plays out we'll see how the pro does when it releases in november maybe people buy into it and it's better than i'm thinking and then we'll really see what microsoft does with the scorpio next year man that's going to be an interesting time and see how it affects what Sony and Microsoft are doing that time. Plus, by the time the Scorpio launches, the Nintendo NX will be available too. So it's going to be a whole different ball game gaming wise once we hit like October, November next year, man. So I guess we'll have to see. Those are my thoughts on the PS4 Pro. Again, I'm not the tech guy, so I can't break down the numbers and stuff. And I don't ever pretend to be the tech guy. So I just have to be honest with you and talk about these things the way I know. But tell me what you guys think. What do you think about Sony's presentation? What do you think about what the PS4 Pro appears to be? How do you think it's going to stack up to the One S and to the Scorpio next year and to maybe even the NX in March? All these things. Discuss your thoughts below. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Thanks for waiting for me to get back from our awesome vacation. Go Broncos. What a great week one opening game victory that was. 
Man, that felt good. And uh, yeah, this is Rob of Rule of Two Review. I'll catch you guys next time on another video.